Hello, this is Andrew Koff with the Exeter Conservation Commission. I'd like to highlight a few things that we've been doing this past year. We've been working on a major grant application for the Rains Barn. This is a publicly owned, town owned barn and farm that's just off Newfields Road, north of 101 and we received over $100,000 in the end of 2021 for the restoration of the barn. I want to thank the town for supporting it in March in our annual vote, and we're looking forward to that big project to redo um, many aspects of that barn and make it a, a more usable structure. So we're really looking forward to that. We continue to work on trails and improve our trail network to make it the most accessible and extensive trail networks around. And lastly, I'm really excited about the upcoming Alewife Festival. On May 14th, the Commission is super excited to be helping coordinate that effort and should be a great event for the whole town and, and area around the river. So um, we're really looking forward to that. Please check out the website to learn more about the Alewife Festival. And, and please look for our website for more details on maps and trails throughout the town. Hi everyone, I'm Eileen Flockhart. I'm chair of the Exeter Tree Committee. And we're gonna show you a little bit about what we've been doing to keep Exeter green. Um, we've had some tree walks in town along Swayze and other areas of town. And we've wor worked together hand in hand with public works and other folks in town to be able to plant three trees at the Park Street Common um, for memorial trees for three different families. We've also planted trees at Gilman Park and we've been connecting with the school children at Lincoln Street School to begin with, with their green team and works very closely with them to create a pollinator garden, um, which will create some wonderful green spaces and, uh, you know, basically what we're trying to do is not only plant new things, but to maintain and protect the precious green space that we have. And certainly through all the pandemic, as everybody's walked in the woods and walked along the river, uh, we realize how precious the trees that we have are and how we want to take care of them and add to them. So that's what we've been doing with the tree committee. And uh, we hope you keep enjoying those spaces. Thank you. Good afternoon and happy Earth Day to all the good people of Exeter. My name is Chris Weeks and I'm the chair of the Facility Advisory Committee. I just wanted to give a quick update on a couple of things that we've been working on over the past year. One is the facility condition assessment and the other is the feasibility study for the public safety complex. The facility condition assessment was recently approved at the town ballot and gives the town the funding to conduct a study to come up with a thorough inventory and accounting of all of the town's buildings and the state of their systems. The outcome of this report should be very helpful in helping the town and all of our various committees come up with good strategies for implementing sustainable features on the town's buildings going forward. The second item is the feasibility study for the public safety complex. That was approved last year and it's been ongoing since then. The town has hired a design firm to start that study and come up with options um, for the new public safety complex. I know uh, as we start to work through and refine which of these options will work best for the town, uh, a big consideration of the design for the new buildings or the renovated buildings will definitely be sustainable features and strategies. So that's it for this year. Uh, we'll see you again next year. Thank you. Hello, I'm Langdon Plummer, chair of the Exeter Planning Board, and I'm going to give you a quick update about the board being green. Exeter's master plan is overseen by a subcommittee of the planning board, working with our town planner as an ongoing process in its implementation. Uh, and at the planning board meetings, we review stormwater management uh, and on all projects to assure the stormwater is managed properly to avoid flooding and controlling pollutants 
as that, that may flow into the Squamscott River and affect the water quality in Great Bay. Our new, uh, our new wastewater plant was built as a major effort to manage pollutants that would otherwise enter the river. The street sweeper also helps control the pollutants. And another green front, the Town Energy Committee has been reviewing the future need for electric vehicle charging locations. Working with the planning office, appropriate language has been developed addressing this need. The board has recently amended our regulations to address electric vehicle charging for multifamily residential projects and non-residential projects. Electric vehicle charging readiness will be required based upon standards addressed in the regulations. Thank you for tuning in. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Chetna Palmer and I am the Sustainability Advisory Committee Chair and I'm here just to give a quick recap on what we got up to in 2021. So we had, obviously with the pandemic, um, we were restricted in our outreach um, activities, but we did as, as before manage to hold a, a litter picking sort of um, activity and get communities to to go along to the DPW uh, to pick up some trash bags and gloves and high-vis jackets so they could do uh, their neighborhood sort of litter pick over the month of April. And also we worked with Eleni and Lou again this year or last year over composting pumpkins. So, so we're getting there. We're sort of keeping the profile on reasons why people should compost and use the free service at the transfer station as well um, to compost all your organic matter so that uh, the amount of waste that ends up in landfill is reduced. And also we will be at um, the Alewife Festival as well uh, to answer any questions and help with any uh, activities or sustainability tips that you may need. And also we have been working with uh, two PA students um, who approached us to talk about junk mail. Uh, and uh, they did a presentation to the, to the committee and they're here just to give a brief uh, insight into the, into the junk mail situation. Hello, my name is Sonia. And I'm Aliana, and we're students at PEA. Um, we are part of the Environmental Action Committee, which is a club on campus, and we've been working with the Sustainability Committee in Exeter for the past couple of months um, to reduce the amount of junk mail in the town of Exeter. We would like to start from talking about negative impacts of junk mail on our environment. Besides the fact that we all know that dealing with piles of junk mail is truly a bother and this is, is just paper from one week, it's also a massive paper waste. Around 77 billion pieces of unsolicited mail are sent to U.S. households annually. 44% of those are tossed out into landfill unopened, so it's basically paper that goes straight from your mailbox into trash. As we all know, paper comes at expense of trees. And when it comes to junk mail, it's 169 million trees, which is, for the reference, enough area to fill 37,000 baseball courts. Junk mail has been intensifying already accelerated issue of deforestation in the United States. We've compiled a document with a list of resources that help you to get off of these junk mail lists. Um, the majority of them are free and relatively easy to use, but we detail all of that in this document. Scan this QR code to get access to the document. We will also be at the Ilwai Festival on May 14th, um, so please feel free to come up to us, ask questions about the environmental impacts of junk mail, and also what you can do to stop junk mail um, and to help the environment. As well as if you want to see more information about statistics and further ways to reduce junk mail, you can go on the Sustainability Committee website. Hello, I'm Richard Huber, current chairman of the River Advisory Committee of Exeter. Six years ago, the town of Exeter's dam was removed. The dam had been a distinguishing characteristic of the town of Exeter for the past 300 years. And the River Advisory Committee had a role to play. The committee never took a position on what should happen to the dam, but it did take a serious commitment to informing the public about all the options that were emerging from the engineering feasibility studies. We needed to know 
all the options, pros, cons, cost. And we presented that to the town people, townspeople, um, as often as we could manage to do it. And they, uh, a, a citizen came forward and put in a warrant article for the cost of removing the dam, and it passed by a large majority. So that was six years ago. Um, since then, there's been a lot of coverage of this in the press. And the most amazing thing is the January issue, January 2021 issue of Scientific American. If you turn to page 22, there is a poem by Allison Deming, who is Regent Professor of Creative Writing at the University of Arizona. This poem is titled Letter to 2050, and it's all about the dam removal. Um, how far inland did the alewife come, I wondered. The dam removed after 300 years, and in the first year then they came in a rush. Locals could hear the gulls gathering in the estuary in their joy, and the alewife swam and swam to the reaches of their ancestors, 11 miles and 300 years of appetite for place their genes remembered and knew how to find. The Abenaki offered a welcome back ceremony and fishers gathered, human, cat, and bird to feast. So this is the return of the alewives. Okay, in addition, in the Sunday paper of December 12th, 2011, 2021, there is a front page article that says, removal of Exeter's Great Dam offers lessons for other communities. In other news, front page of the March 10th, 2022, uh, Foster's Daily Democrat features an article on the Durham's votes to remove the mill pond by a 74% majority of the town voters. So that's what's going on. Uh, the alewife do come back to swim up to their spawning grounds past our town, and uh, we will celebrate that with an alewife festival in mid-May. Um, we are looking forward to our future role as a, uh, an advisory committee in the removal or mitigation of the hazards of the pickpocket dam, which are on our plate to, to look forward to. So that's what's going on with the River Committee, and uh, we are very much uh, hoping to uh, amplify Earth Day. Hi, I'm Renee from the Town Energy Committee. You'll get to meet me and the rest of the members at the Town Elwife Festival this coming May. We'll be doing a table in the park, so come on over and say hi. Recently, one of our committee members put up a rebates page on our website so that you can take a look at different ways that you can save on efficiency measures and clean energy. That was Betsy. Another of our members, Amy, she's working on helping the town hall to get insulated in the attic so that when we get some different heating systems in there, it's all efficient. So everybody on the committee does different things. One of the things that I do mostly is I work on the electric cars. You may have been to one of our EV days in the fall where we have sh local owners showcasing their cars outside the town hall and the dealerships come down for test drives. Uh, another thing we're working on is getting charging units for those electric vehicles. And I'm happy to announce that the planning board last night just approved a regulation where any new parking spaces that come in for residences and businesses and I'm talking about new spaces, two to five percent of those spaces will be what we call make ready for electric vehicle chargers. Now that doesn't mean a charger is going in there, it just means that the conduits run under the parking lot before it's paved and that there's extra space in the panel to accommodate for that. The owners, it's up to them to put in the charger or not, but it has to be make ready because we're getting ready for electric cars. And speaking of that, I just got the latest figures from the town clerk and she tells me that we now have 98 plug-in vehicles registered in, in Exeter and 458 hybrid vehicles. Some of those hybrid vehicles are also plug-in vehicles, they're combinations. And that brings us to a total of 556 electric vehicles in Exeter this year. We formed a subcommittee on community power and thank you for voting for it at our past election on March 8th. It's going to take some time to get into place, but thank you very much for giving us the go-ahead for our future plans. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lou Hitzrope from the Community Power Aggregation Committee. 
During the past year, the committee developed a community power plan for Exeter that was approved by the select board and adopted by town vote. The plan enables the town to purchase electricity directly from suppliers, giving all Exeter residents and businesses access to a greener electricity supply at a cost that's competitive with or less than Unitil's rate. There's still work to do. The New Hampshire Public Utilities Committee must publish regulations for community power plans and establish guidelines for how towns will access necessary data. And the select board and town manager will have to determine the best provider for the services needed. Hopefully this can all be accomplished in the next 12 months. But thanks to the efforts of the committee, the select board, and our town manager and Exeter voters, we are well on our way to a cleaner energy future for Exeter. And indeed for the state, as many other New Hampshire communities are implementing community power plans as well. For more information about Exeter's community power plan, please go to the community power aggregation website that can be found on the town's website. Thanks and happy Earth Day.